Guys, it's the Cook and the Coach podcast. I'm Cam the Cook. Bays and the Coach. Welcome back, everyone. He's been on the show more than anybody else. He's the legend He's actually himself. watching right now on live. <laughs> Wait, you're on live? Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, he is, he's been on the show more than anybody, I think. The only one that's close is uh, Jesse Lindahl. Um, but, yeah, we're excited to have yeah. him on. He's going to be on here in just a minute. I told Jess that um, he was coming on, and I could see in his eyes he was a little bit... <laughs> he's a little he's a little irked he's a little bit irked <laughs> a little bit the, here's the Lauren problem live what's up lauren here's the problem with the live it's over on your side because we're doing this remotely still they can only yeah. hear what you say so it sounds like so you're go live with me go on go on the live <laughs> all right hold on hold go on. on your personal ig and we'll just do it that way i, I okay, make it just go back and forth okay hold on hold on let me I don't and we're only gonna do it until we get to the interview yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. So I just sent the thing. Did you request? I requested it, yeah. All right. Boom. All right. It's like real good. And boom, we're live. And boom, we're live. I can't remember the last time. I, I can't remember if I've ever gone live before. Like ever. Oh, shit. shit. All right. I'm going to turn the volume down. Okay. Hey, this is fun. Yeah. This is fun. All right. Sick. So yeah, he's uh, he, I'm excited for the rivalry. This will be fun. We're gonna jump in. We're gonna bring him on in just a minute. But it's gonna be fun, dude. Have, uh, dude, I've been seeing you post that you've been watching the Olympics a lot, and I can tell you're just in your happy place watching that shit. Dude, it's okay. <clears throat> Who are these people that don't like the Olympics? I, I don't get it. Um, I mean, not athletic who people, people who didn't play sports growing up. Ass... No, 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 no. Fuck all that. This is an international. What other circumstances does the entire international community of humans coming together for anything? For anything? I don't know. I mean, I can't think of anything yeah. off the top. Everyone's Whoa. like, oh, the Olympics, I don't care. No, 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 no. Wait, why do you think Come they on, don't care? Have some fun. Why do you think they don't for care? Re- Every person I know over the age. I don't even know. Here's the thing. All my friends are like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't feel like watching it. What, what else do you got to do? It's still pandemic season. Yeah. What, what else are you going to do? Stop no, I, I don't get it. Stop, I, it. Stop I, it. Yeah, dude, I don't. I know. You don't like, by the way, you were saying Naomi Osaka's overrated, and I'm a big fan. And she lit the, the opening hey, ceremony, regarded. the well, in many regards. I'm a fan in every regard. Um, oh, she, lit the, she lit the torch. For the or the final torch for the ceremony. Do you see that? How much have you been watching? Have you have you been pretty much locked in on Olympics all the time, or how much I've have been, you? I've been locked in on swimming and gymnastics. I everyone knows I'm just waiting for track and field because that's my that's my shit. Right. Um. I'm hope I'm waiting around for Olympic weightlifting too. That I'm, I'm gonna be paying attention to that as well. I feel like there should be other things going on in the Olympics too, like powerlifting. That should be Olympic sport. Hmm. Wait, it's not? Powerlifting's not an Olympic sport? I don't know. I no. I feel like they added a bunch of shit this past time around. Like, they have skateboarding now. They have uh, fucking... It's not bowling, it's but there's like a bunch of shit. They added some stupid shit. Then you take climbing. They added shit. climbing, right? Like, there's a various... Uh, I think they added like three climbing events, I'm pretty sure. Climbing? Yeah, I think Kari was telling me about that. I think there's like three different uh, climbing events. How do you that score happen. that? Uh, I think there's a speed one. Uh, there's like a difficult... like a a difficulty course and then a third one i can't remember but are they free um, soloing do these people have potential to die? <laughs> yeah they, if just, they do i'm in if they <laughs> do so i'm sick. all in that would be so <laughs> sick if wherever the the olympics are being held they just had the climbers go up the nearest skyscraper or mountain whatever's closest to like the arenas that would be sick Dude, like some mission I would tune in tom cruise that. shit <laughs> that would be sick Dude. actually we need to make this happen we need to start, we need to start a petition ken this oh is, this we do we do. I was thinking about this base. Uh, uh, what? Okay, so in the Winter Olympics, there's curling, and curling is like a sport that I feel like pretty much anybody could do. And so it seems like technically yeah. you could How's become life? an Olympian. Yeah, yeah. So like you could, in theory, become an Olympian really late into your life. Whereas most Olympic yeah. sports, you're like, like they're young as fuck. So like. Is there an equivalent for the Summer Olympics, like similar to curling? Is there a way to become a Summer Olympian with minimal <laughs> athletic talent? Race walking. <laughs> what the race fuck? Walking. That's a real yeah, thing? It's an Olympic sport. 
Yeah. No shit. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. my God. America's the best at it. <laughs> 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 Dude, we we put up some numbers in the Olympics. We I gotta we gotta be honest here. We put up some numbers. I mean, who <laughs> who's like we should we should have someone like get into competitive race walking at like age like twenty five and just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> just start training there, dude. I honestly, you could dude. probably see someone become that like as a troll. All right, so just a big. Thank you and shout out to Andrew and to Decky and the Back Pocket crew, Lauren, everybody. You guys threw in a fantastic, fantastic event. Um, lots of fun, lots of crazy white people, but it was a good time. Um, it was really weird. I went by myself and I ended up knowing like several people on the boat that I didn't know were going there. They were just there. So that was kind of cool to run into them. Um, lots of orange out there. So shout out to the Strength Candid girls and all they're doing and the community they built. It was really fun to hang out with them and see them doing their thing. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to next year. It's going to be lit, I'm sure. I don't know how they're going to fit more people in that boat, though, because it was I thought I was going to teeter at moments there, but <laughs> it was still a fun time. Bro, what so. the fuck were you wearing? You looked like Popeye. What the fuck did you have on, dude? Popeye? <laughs> well, yeah, bro, you look like Popeye. What do you mean? Play back fly. the tape. <laughs> I didn't say Popeye didn't I look, look fly. fly. Bro, you look like Popeye. You had the guns. You got that shirt. <laughs> Bro, you looked like Popeye. I looked fantastic. I I'm not saying That's Popeye doesn't time. look fantastic. I'm just saying you looked I like Popeye, bro. I felt like I was the flyest person there. Let my hair loose. The curls were out. <laughs> had the special shades on. Uh, fully unbuttoned shirt with the fanny pack. The five-inch short shorts. I, it was a vibe, man. <laughs> Flower patterns everywhere. It was a vibe. That's all I can say. I think there was like 350 people in that boat. What? Was it a yacht? What What size was the boat? Yeah, it, it was a big boat. There's like four levels. Oh, sick. Yeah, nice. man. It was, it was a good time. They they had plenty of booze going around, so we enjoyed that. It was a great time. Man Paul was sponsoring the event. It was Who? a good time, man. Manpa, this one like seltzer company. Oh, I've never had Manpa. <laughs> that sounds like, <laughs> dude, Manpa, what? dude. Say. I've never said like I've never had Manpa. That sounds, and this is no judgment. It sounds a little like homosexual. It sounds like oh, I got a little Manpa last support, night. I'm not saying there's anything the wrong with people. that. We support the alpha people. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I just have never heard of Manpa, and it sounds like it sounds like a sexual act. I, I will 100% admit when I saw like Manpaw as like one of the sponsors, my eyebrows raised for half a second. They're like, hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's was, it was good shit. It, it, I like it. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Man. Great event. Lots of fun. Um, again, shout out to everyone who made that event possible. We'll definitely be going next year. I'm going to have to bring Ken next year. Yeah, bro, I didn't go. Yo, back pocket. The fuck? I roasted you. I berated you. I asked you. you to go. <laughs> no, you I didn't, you bro. You didn't ask yes, me to I go. I did. No, when? I, de- I wouldn't billion percent ask bro, you to go. this is what You're you like, do all oh, the time. Man, I don't know. We'll see. No, no, no. no, no this is no, what no, everyone no. does. This is what everyone in the group does. No, no, no. Stop. No. I ask people, hey, do you want to go to this event? You're like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Would you ask in the group text? About it. No, I asked you personally. No, you didn't. Bro, this is one of the things. After a show. No. Yes. Bro, this is one of the things that you You're do. You're like, yeah, man, we'll see. I'm like, okay, that means no. No. <laughs> bro, this is what you do. You think that you ask me things, and then you don't. And then I say, bro. I ask everyone everything all the time. That's not true, dude. You've literally, I've literally said, bro, you didn't text me. You'll be like, bro, where are you? I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? I texted you. I thought we were going to whatever today. And it's like, you check back, dude. Play back the tape. You didn't even ask. <laughs> I 100% bro, asked you bro, to record an episode. You played too much ago. football, bro. You're already starting to lose your memory. This is bad. <laughs> you're too, Listen, you're too in. young. What can to... I do? I don't know what to tell you. CT is already setting in. <laughs> I might have CT. It's very possible. Oh, man, I took dude. a lot of hits in practice. Uh, I'm bro, not lie. bro, let's be real. Bro, let's it, be really, really honest with ourselves. How early do you think you started seeing the symptoms? <laughs> Oh, bro. It, it may oh, or may have not started in college. 
Oh man, I may have not started in college. That's so funny. Why did I have I not been more critical of you? Why have I not been like pointing this out? You, dude, you've had CT for so long. Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm not gonna say you're right. Oh. But I'm not gonna say you're wrong. Oh man, dude. I might have CTE. Oh man, <laughs> look. Oh man. It's the hardest I've laughed Let's in a while. It's on not this that, but if it is. <laughs> hey man, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Oh, you're 25. <laughs> it makes so much sense. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, yeah, when, uh, you, when you think about it, it uh, actually makes a lot of sense, bro. It makes so much sense. Yes, there's so many questions I have. <laughs> oh, it explains the Popeye outfit and everything, bro. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh fuck! Oh, I'm I'm sweating. Oh, oh my god! Uh, All right, we I told Misky we would send him the link. A while ago, we got let's. I let's let's I might get this over CT, to him. though. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> oh. All right. Just, just oh. a minimal case. Just a mild case of CT. Okay. Um, he was at the game, NBA Finals. He was there tuning in live, like in the lower level, watching Giannis. Yes. When a Bucks championship for the first time in decades. Yeah. We're talking to him about that. Mm-hmm. Also get his perspective on all those things, sports, what's going on currently, all right. that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, guys, here is our conversation with our good friend and most returning guest, Nathan Miskey. Um, we were just uh, it went long because I told Beza that he probably is suffering from CTE right now. <laughs> and so it really made me laugh. <laughs> so that's why we didn't send you the link when we told you. we would. So I'm sorry about that. When he broke it down, it made the most sense in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the most likely option right now. But dude, yeah, I haven't like I haven't seen you in person. I'm trying to even think, man, because obviously 2020 was just a just a fucking mess. I don't think yeah. I saw you in person at all. 2020, right? Uh, right at the beginning, when we recorded like the third podcast yes. ever. Wow. I'm cooking coach. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I were... BS my way through once upon a time in Hollywood. I know. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot I about was that. I'm so shocked. That was impressive. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. We we talked for three hours about different movies and one of the hours <laughs> Miss Key just BS that he had seen and had all these thoughts about once upon a time in Hollywood. And we didn't ever pick up on the fact. But if you play no. back the tape, if you watch, if you listen back to the episode, you can tell that he always, like, you always deflected it in such a great way. Like, the way that you, like, structured your, like, the way Too you, perfect. Like, Naomi osaka it back to us, it oh, was yeah. just so, like, it was we so We love Naomi Osaka, by the way. You what? We love Naomi Osaka. Oh, we love Naomi Osaka on the pod. <laughs> Half the pod is in love with right now. Two thirds of the pod. <laughs> but is she like eighteen? No, dude. What's the matter with you? There is a. I don't know. A, bro, get out of here, man. She seems kind of young. That's all I'm saying. She's. You are unbelievable. What? Let's look this up right now. Let's look this up right. Better safe than sorry, right? I, I just think she's sorry. a great tennis player. Me too. I think I'm just a big fan I, of her. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. I see her as a tennis player. I don't see her as nothing else. She's 23. Nothing wrong with that, dude. Get your mind out of the okay. gutter. Jeez. My mind's not in the gutter. Your guys in the gutter for anything. Bro, you my mind's just completely out of the gutter. if I was publicly announcing my attraction to someone <laughs> who was too inappropriately young. I'm trying to oh save my. your ass. Bro. I'm trying to save your ass, Ken. That's all. I told Baze the other day, like, I have this big crush on this one TikToker. And he was like, oh, is she is she of age? I'm like, yes, dude. What do you think I'm doing? You got to be sure. This? You got to be sure out here, man. You don't know what's going on. TikTok's wild. It is wild. Are TikTok you on it? It's so crazy. I, he is on it now. I scroll through it. Oh, yeah, That's okay. about it. Okay. And now I found Misky, and I won't stop sending him stuff now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
they just started Bro. following me. I don't have yeah. any videos, but like I have like <laughs> 20 people who follow me. I don't know why. They just started following me like four minutes later. He sends me a TikTok. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah, of course. Four minutes. Of course. Late, dude. Bro, how has it been in Wisconsin lately? Because it's just it after the W, after that trophy came home, what, it's got to feel just insane over there. Yeah, I mean, we had, I think, half a million people showed up to the parade and, and to celebrate, which, wow. I mean, it makes sense. Like, this city hasn't seen a championship. Not only the Bucks, but the city of Milwaukee hasn't seen a championship in 50 years. Wow. Which, which means most people haven't seen a championship in their lifetime. Wow. Obviously, the Packers have won some, but that's just not the same. <laughs> no, not at all. No, 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 it's not. For Milwaukee specifically, yeah, it's different. Bro, those videos looked insane of the seas of people that were just partying and freaking out when they won. Oh, my God. So crazy. I would have. Yeah, the Deer yeah. District, wild, right? They were saying 65,000. I think the police department came out a couple days ago and even said it was more than that. They think there was 100,000 people in it. No plus, shit. Plus the 18,000 or whatever in the stadium. So. <laughs> wow. I, I have a friend who lives in, in that area, and she was, like, at the bars in Milwaukee, and she was showing me, like, her, her snaps or whatever, and there's, like, everyone's on the tables just, like, <laughs> slamming beers, like, beer bottles everywhere on the ground. There's trash everywhere, like... So much trash. A shocking amount of trash. <laughs> I walked out of the stadium. I was like, okay, let's let's prepare. We're going to we're gonna see some stuff like it's going <laughs> to yeah. be it's going to be wild out there. Like we were yeah. about to walk into a war zone and it was like people were celebrating. People were yelling. People were running around. But it wasn't like wasn't like Philly after they won, for example. <laughs> right. Right. Not as, not as many deaths, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a few, actually. but not as many. Just really? Shootings, I thought there was. No deaths. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. No big deal. That's so great. So we we didn't even say we haven't even said yet, but you got to go to the game. You went to the, you took a risk. You you rolled the dice, which I love. You rolled the dice. You, it wasn't oh, yeah. a given that they were going to win the championship that night, but you rolled the dice. Yes. Yeah. We, we we took all my disposal income. We rolled it out there for the chance to see something I might never get a chance to Woo. see again. So. I'm sure it's a pretty penny too. Yeah, it was not cheap, but worth it, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Do you want to say how much was the ticket? Do you want to say or no? You don't have to say on this. It was sixteen hundred dollars. So. <laughs> <laughs> and how quickly did you decide? Woo! Were you sitting on the decision for a while, or did you want to like, or did you decide just spur of the moment, like, oh my god, I have to go to this game, or were, have you been like plotting this, like, oh my gosh, if they go to a game six, I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah. So in the 2019 run, I went to a bunch of games, right? I went to one versus the Pistons. I went to two oh, versus sick. the Raptors. Uh, so I was there, right? And so mm. this time around, I was like, you know what? I'm saving up for the finals. Like if we go to the finals, I'm going to a finals game. But then I was gone. I was gone for the week that games three and four were in Milwaukee. So it was like my only option was game six. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. I was like, the number didn't matter in an extent. <laughs> yeah. I was going to make it happen. Right. I was gonna yes. make it happen, but this this is yeah, it. You have it was, to go. Okay. Yeah, I got I got four apps on my phone that I'm just you know was constantly checking, trying to get. Oh, a good for deal. sure. Oh, I per- nice. I didn't do this during during this game, but in 2019, I was like two hours before the game, I would check and like all the apps because that's when people start panic selling, right? Right. They're like, right. I got to get rid of these tickets. Right. And so yeah, in 2019, I got to go to some games for really cheap. So. Nice. That's the shit. Now, when you actually hit like. Like, buy, like, the tickets? Did your heart, like, sink a little bit? Like, ah, oh, man, what if they go to game seven? Is your heart, did, is it like, a, like a second guessing once you got the tickets? Where it's like, nope, we're, we're here, we're in it, this is happening, whatever. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, no, I think I I'd played that scenario in my head beforehand, and it was like, full send. We got to do I love it, it, right? I love that. Yep. I love that. That's <laughs> totally. awesome. Like, no way I wasn't going to go. So I just, I thought about that disappointment compared to the disappointment of if they would have won and I didn't go. Mm. Oh. And there was just such a great disparity. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, I, f- I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. At Chill Botanicals, we're releasing this week. By the time you hear this episode, we, we already launched. So go get your shit. Go get that CBD broad spectrum energy blend. Go get those D8 THC gummies. I love both the products. They work great for me. I use energy blend in the morning. Every morning when I wake up, even before my cup of coffee, I use that shit 
every single day. It helps me clear up my mind. It helps me get in the right mood for your day. It actually helps improve my mood too. I'm, if Kenny knows I'm a grouch in the morning. <laughs> I did the energy blend. About 15 minutes later, I'm all better. I'm ready to go. The D8, it's true. THC gummies, I use those every once in a while. I may have used them on the last pod. I, I use them every <laughs> now and then. It, it gets you little, you know, but not too much. It gets you to the right spot. Helps you recover. I definitely felt more recovery in the morning after hard workouts. Um, so I like those, using those too. So guys, use my code BAYS10. That's BAYS, B-A-E-Z 10. For 10% off your discount, help the boy out. Help support Chill, the movement, all that good stuff. Again, you can find them online at chillbotanicals.com. You can find them in the link in my bio too. So go check that out. Theo Vaughn, I heard Theo Vaughn say this the other day. He's like, you got to, in so many things in life, you got to ask the girl out. You got to ask her out. You asked out the Bucks. Bit. Like, you, you took the risk. The Bucks might not have said yes. They might not have, they might have gone to a game seven, but you took the risk. This is what we need to be doing. This is good. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what was and I am, I am so known for asking girls out. So. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bro, bro, the confidence to never post anything on social media. Dude, that's some that's some BDE right there if I've ever heard of it, man. That's great. Um what was the energy like in the what was the vibe like in the arena at the game? What was that like? It was just crazy the whole time. Like pregame was actually pretty chill. Um I think I don't know this, but I know MLB rules a little bit, and so they weren't doing no, an, an, a lot of the normal like on court stuff that they do, like to hype the crowd up and stuff. And I think it's mm. a rule like they can't because of COVID, they can't have people on the floor. Sure, uh, uh, okay. that's a, that's a rule with MLB that they couldn't have like stuff people on the field. Um, so mm. it was pretty chill um, relative to it being a finals game. Right. Uh, I I walked by Stephen A. Told him Milwaukee was a great city. You saw Stephen A. I love that. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I yelled at him. I yelled at him for like 30 feet away. Do you see ya? It's like, Did Milwaukee's he... a great city. <laughs> <laughs> Did he seem to acknowledge you or is he just in his, he zoned out? I think he probably heard it. And then like 20 minutes later, probably unrelated. We definitely made eye contact. But... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love that. Dude. He was kind of like giving that. me a death glare. So maybe he knew. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, a guy like that must get so much shit talk to him all the oh, time. Constantly. I Oh my god. Constantly. Not to deviate too far off this. Water up a duck's back. But um I have a friend who used to work security at US Bank. And every time Aaron Andrews would come in town for a Vikings game, he would be the one to like be your like personal escort. And he was like, dude, the insane things that guys would yell at her as she's like walking through the stadium, like you wouldn't even like imagine. Like the sexual harassment oh she would get. Yeah, that poor woman. Like, every single city yeah. she goes to, like, she gets, like, the most insane, yeah. like, shit yelled at her. And she's like, let's roll off her back. So much for Minnesota nice. Yeah. God damn, dude. Dude. What a trailblazer. That's like walking past, like, a hundred construction sites in a row for your job. Apparently, he was like, yeah, she's just unfazed. <laughs> like, insane. she's literally heard it all, and she doesn't care anymore, and she just walks wow. through it. And, yeah, I, I, don't, I can't even imagine being her bro it sucks that she has to get to that point but it's so impressive that she can do it there's probably she probably has nerves of steel oh there's my god probably yeah. nothing you could say to her that would even raise her heart rate but yeah once the game started it was just so loud the whole time second quarter it was quieter because we had scored four points in the first seven minutes of it <laughs> um but then by the time we got to the third quarter and then the fourth quarter and then when we were like it was like 30 seconds left and it was like it's over it was like it was so loud like you yeah. can't even hear yourself screaming loud oh my god what oh I missed wait was it full capacity people. that's so great that's so yeah. great wow where were you yeah. in the in in everything we're like upper balcony what were, were we talking lower bowl corner so okay. section 121 row 21 seat 16 mm. but uh <laughs> <laughs> if, if we're being specific but like just to the right of the backboard that the bucks were shooting on in the second half okay oh right that's on. sick dude so an incredible view of Giannis just driving down deandre ayton's throat over and over again. love that <laughs> love that this finals feels different for me because one i feel like there wasn't much media attention on it but that's because you have two smaller market teams that are playing versus like i don't LA get that and like narrative. miami 
I don't get that. Milwaukee, absolutely smaller market. Phoenix is like the fourth biggest city in the country. Like, they're not a basketball city, but they're huge. Right. They don't have a huge fan base, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this, their fan base isn't that big. I mean, I don't know. I just felt like people, like, cared less about sports this year for some reason. Yeah. That's in true. my opinion, at least. That's I think true. people just cared less about it. But it was cool to see, like, everyone in Milwaukee celebrate because obviously, I see, like, Milwaukee. NBA championship means more to that city than it does to like an LA, you know. Yeah, yeah I, you feel I mean, that I energy. Get, like, you feel like it meant something to like everyone there. Like, it actually meant something as opposed to somewhere else. Yeah, and this is this is the culmination of a great story for Milwaukee, right? And and to mm-hmm. tell this story, we got to go back to 2013, right? I think it was the year we all graduated <laughs> high school. Yep. Even even Jesse, he didn't get held back again, so he was graduating that year too. <laughs> <laughs> but on April eighteenth of twenty thirteen, the prophet spoke. Brandon Jennings, Bucks in six. And if you don't know, that's where that phrase came from because we were facing the Miami Heat. You know, the LeBron Wade Bosch Miami Heat mm-hmm. with Brandon Jennings and Monta Ellis. And Ursan Ilyasova and a bunch of people that had no chance beating the Miami Heat. And we get swept, <laughs> uh-huh. right? Yeah. But this was a big year for the Bucks because not only was this phrase born that was memed to death and then made fun of, and then Milwaukee took it on and this meaning and, and this rallying cry that it became. But on June 27th, with the 15th pick, we take this kid from Greece named Giannis. <laughs> and then... On July 31st, we trade away the oracle of Milwaukee, the prophet Brandon Jennings. <laughs> and in return, we receive another great scoring point guard named Brandon Knight and some other guy thrown in the deal named Chris Middleton or something. And so from that, we build this team. And we know this story from there, right? We fast forward to 2019, Giannis wins the MVP, but eventually lose to Kawhi. <laughs> and then 2020, Giannis wins another MVP, and he's the Defensive mm. Player of the Year. And we're unstoppable. Mm. Like, we're the statistically one of the best teams ever, like, by the analytics, by the point differential, by a bunch of factors. Mm. Until we get to the bubble. Mm. And we just get smoked by Miami. <laughs> we just had no chance. Somehow we forgot how to play basketball. And so it was this long culmination, and we get to the playoffs this year, and we beat Brooklyn by literally a toenail. And then we beat, we beat Atlanta without Giannis. And then Giannis, who somehow has an indestructible knee, leads us to 50 points in a closeout game to beat Phoenix in six. What a story. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> love it. Bro, I love it. We gotta, I love it. We gotta I love put it. some inspirational music behind that. <laughs> At least on the clip. Oh man, Bucks oh, and Six sure. needs to be our, the title boat, bro. That's like that's gotta be it. <laughs> Bucks and Six, dude. The amount of times you know that- the day after the finals, I just it, to nobody just yelled Bucks and Six. <laughs> <laughs> like 12 different times throughout the day just random i'm just like bucks and six <laughs> bro i know where that, that's where that meme came from i didn't realize that's where that meme came from i always saw the meme i didn't know that's the the original there's a yeah, place where brandon jennings was like you know obviously they're a great team but we're a pretty good team too i forgot what he said exactly but they, they were like well what's your prediction for the series then it's like I think I, we're I've gonna seen... win in six <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that meme so many times. I didn't realize that was the original oh. story. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I, I love that this just adds to the the rivalry between you and Jesse because Miski, you're the first person to ever get an ovation while recording an episode of the podcast. <laughs> I do what I do, bro. You just delivered a <laughs> soliloquy, dude. I had notes typed up for that. One. I saw. It. Oh, I bro, love it. I lit love- up. Your face lit up white. I kept on seeing you say something and then start to forget it. Pull up the tab. Face gets white. Remembers it. Closes the tab. That's darkens awesome. a little bit. This is the most important episode, of course. This is the most uh, important dude, episode on this podcast. Bro, I appreciate the preparation. This is great. Oh, man. Dude, what are your thoughts on Giannis's spicy talk to LeBron after, after he won? Because obviously those comments were alluding towards LeBron and KD She's kind of calling out everyone else in the NBA, all these other superstars. Yeah. I mean, 
I agree. <laughs> like, Giannis is Talking that shit. good. If he joined a super team, they would win it. Or they would win yeah. it within a couple years. But, like, he did it the right way. He stuck through. He signed the Supermax before, like, we had ever mm-hmm. won. He stuck by yeah. Chris Middleton. Yeah. And we got Drew Holiday, who, by the way, played amazing. Even though he couldn't play offense at all. Like, the dude locked down Harden, and then he locked down Trey Young, and then he locked down Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Like, what he did defensively is just incredible. And I couldn't so, agree more. That that team doing that, like, that means more than if Brooklyn would have won it or when the Heat won it. Do you, do you see Giannis staying after his, his deal is up, or do you see him, you know, sticking around for the long haul? He, really, he has, like, what? Two, three years left? No, he, he just signed the Supermax, so he's got five years. He's not like other superstars at all in that he does love living in Milwaukee, so who knows? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if he wants to, If he wants to leave after five years and go chase a ring or whatever he wants to do, good for him. <laughs> like, yeah, you got us one, you're, you're golden. <laughs> I would but, say, like, but, if you're a Milwaukee guy, you can't be mad if he leaves. No. You got your chip. It's the same thing. It's, it's really similar with, like, the when when LeBron got the the chip for Cleveland, like at that point, it, people couldn't be as mad. Like you came back again and got it and like then went to the Lakers. It's like, all right, I did what I had to do. Now I'm going to go <laughs> make and, way more money. And LeBron did it despite ownership. Like the Cleveland right. ownership is terrible. Milwaukee has pretty good ownership. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe. We can You can follow us on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all over the fucking place. Instagram at Cooking Coach Pod. TikTok is at Cooking Coach youtube.com slash the cooking the coach you can find us on spotify apple music soundcloud whatever wherever where you get your podcast that's where you can find us guys it just looked incredible dude you looked so giddy too in the picture when you were on the court i was so happy you got to go on the court what was the court like because when did people decide we're, we're storming the court like so it was pretty instant i didn't like i didn't go down there until after the trophy presentation like oh, i wasn't right. down there until like 45 minutes after the game ended mm. and so it was yeah. just you know like we didn't like plan on doing it we just like went to the bathroom and they looked back out and they're like are people going on the court and so yeah. we just made our way to that section took a picture and then left but first thing you did when they won when the when the buzzer hit zero first thing you did uh reaction i i don't know we were in shock like <laughs> 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 like the whole like last 30 seconds of the game which was you know a couple minutes long it was just like blacked out screaming just like oh my gosh we're actually gonna win yeah like there, there's no possible way to blow this anymore yeah yeah Giannis just scored 50 like it was just crazy Ooh. and yeah. it's like so a lot sick. of people a lot of people That's were like so crying sick. like my buddy i went with he was crying at this point and he's like how are oh. you not crying i was like i'm in so much shock but like the next day watching the highlights i was crying so oh that's beautiful. I love that. Crazy thing you saw out and about. Honestly. Just a ra- craziest image you saw. Yeah. We didn't, like, I was expecting to see crazy things. Like, we didn't see that much crazy. I mean, just the overall image of looking out at 100,000 people in the Deer District is crazy. I mean, after the game, oh, yeah. there was just people, like, shirtless, like, <laughs> sprinting through traffic and yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just, we, walked, sure we walked through this one beautiful. tunnel. We walked mm. through this one tunnel, not like an actual tunnel, but just like it goes under a building, basically. Mm. And just every single person just on their horns, like everyone's screaming, <laughs> Bucks and six. <laughs> the best atmosphere. Just chaotic. Dude, that's, so that's awesome, dude. The biggest thing about this Bucks team is they're so likable. Mm. Like mm. Giannis is such a likable guy, like this kid from Greece who is selling CDs on the streets of <laughs> Athens. And, like, him and his brothers couldn't play on the same basketball team because they only had one pair of shoes between him and Tenassus. Wow. So they had to, like, switch who had it for practice. Wow. And it's, like, this kid and now two of his brothers have rings, right? They mm-hmm. make it to the NBA. There's stories of Giannis, like, walking to the gym his rookie year or, like, getting rides from, like, random fans that see him. Wow. Because he's, he's sending all the money he makes back to his family in Greece. Mm-hmm. And what? it's, like, now... Now it's like, what What does Giannis do the day after he wins a championship? He goes to Chick-fil-A and orders a 50-piece. I love it. 
As I'm saying, yeah. I think I think he'll be like, around for a long call because he's from Greece. He's from that struggle. He doesn't need a lot. He doesn't need the LA lifestyle. He doesn't need the fancy New York skyscraper. He just wants to play basketball, make money for his family, and just hang out. Simple guy. Yeah, and there's the, there's the video of him tucking his son into bed with his two, the two trophies on either side of him. <laughs> like he's so funny and nice, and it's like. None of these guys that Milwaukee has were supposed to be superstars. Giannis, 15th pick, not in the lottery. Chris Middleton, second round pick. Drew Holiday, I think he was the 17th pick. Yeah. The highest pick we have is Brooke Lopez, who's, yeah, a starter for us, but certainly not a superstar. Right. It's like you look at other teams that win championships, it's Kevin Durant, the second overall pick, or LeBron, the first overall pick. Mm. Or even Steph, who's like, who was underrated coming out of college, but he was a top 10 pick. Right. It's like Milwaukee is a bunch of guys who weren't supposed to be it. And so I just, I think it's so likable. Drew Holiday, also so likable. Like, stopped playing basketball for a year because his wife had cancer and wanted to support her. Mm -hmm. It's like, these are such likable guys. Absolutely. Wow. I think we'll win more. I really do. Maybe this is just blind optimism now, but the Nets are always going to be hurt. Kyrie's made of glass. True. <laughs> Hey, that's true. LeBron's 90 years old. I mean, I've said that about Tom Brady, but basketball's different. <laughs> so not one and done? No. Okay. No, we're going to be in it for the next... As long as that core stays together, which we got them all locked up, like, we'll be in it every year. Will we win it every year? Probably not, but we'll be in it every year. I like that. I like that. Before you go, what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers and Devon Adams next year? This year? Oh, they're gone. Where are they going? This is the, one last ride, one last dance for them. After this year, they're done. And then they're out of here. After this year, they're I don't know where they're going, but they're out of here. Okay. All right. We'll see. Miski, a pleasure as always. This is really fun. This, this is the best, man. Oh, any any time, as long as I'm ahead of Jesse. <laughs> oh, I got it. in on in honor of of you being on and the whole once upon a time in Hollywood thing. I'm happy to say I didn't watch a single game of the NBA playoffs this year. <laughs> I could tell. Neither did I. <laughs> no. Neither did I. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. I guess I didn't really. I didn't really do it in full, in full Misky style because you could tell that I didn't watch anything. <laughs> well, if if you guys go back and listen, you can also tell that I didn't watch that. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Very true. Guys, thank you for listening to that conversation. I'm gonna go and get the CT shit figure out because now I'm scared and I don't know. I might be losing my memory in my mind. So that's it for today. We thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we really appreciate you. Please spread the word. Please share with a friend, a clip, a comment, whatever you got to do. And we will see you next time. Peace.